John here, guys, and today we're talking about the FR7. This is the open source 7 inch design I have here at the front a GoPro Hero 9 mount. And when you're carrying a camera of that heft, you want to have the power to go along with it. So these are a gigantic size Brother Hobby 2806.5. 1700 kb that we're going to be running on 6s with seven inch people want a bit more range these days range this is an analog quad one of the last ones i'll be building because it's using the foxier cat which is probably the greatest of all analog camera releases. Check out the lens on this thing. It's almost as big as the Zeiss lens on my Sony a7 III that I'm shooting this on right now. Um, let's go through the rest of the build. I needed an ESC that could handle all of this power with this giant prop. So I'm using the Hobbywing 30x30 30 30 60 amp. I have the Furious FPV um, flight controller up here with the real pit system. And then for my video transmitter, I'm using the AKK Race Ranger, along with uh, Team Black Sheep Crossfire. Of course, I have my removal tee up here. If I was gonna do more of a long range, I would mount it vertical on the side, which you could do on the side here, no problem. This frame is large, it's beefy, and I don't really fly long range. So what I did was get this very special True RC OCP antenna right here. Now what this does for you is it gives you an antenna combination that sticks out far out here because I'm gonna be running a big LiPo on here. For this, I ran one of these Pulse 1556S. You're probably gonna actually wanna run a little bit bigger battery than this, but this is the largest one I had around. This was plenty good for five, six minutes of cruising. If you ran something more like an 1800 or a 2000, you'd probably get that really long 20, 25 minute uh, flight time out of something like this. So, okay, spoiler alerts. I'm just not a fan of this. I just don't care about seven inch or long range, but I wanted to at least try it and note what the differences are. Um, there's no mistake that this antenna placement will get you incredible range. There's no mistake that these giant motors and props will be efficient and powerful. You know what the biggest thing that jumped out at me is, is that the cruising speed as you increase the prop size is much higher. So the thing is when you're only going about 40, 50, 60% throttle in those mid ranges in a five inch quad, you'd be cruising around like 40 miles an hour. Maybe this cruising around, you're going like 50 to 60. So yes, you're like not all the way on the throttle, but it is moving at a brisk pace. And so that is kind of cool. It'll help you get there and back a lot faster. Um, speaking of that, having that extra size and speed did make for some really smooth footage, some smooth flight. Uh, it was kind of a windy day, so even though this is heavy, these seven inch props do kind of catch the wind a little bit, but it still did very admirably. The real question is, with these micro long range builds out now, are you really gonna wanna go long range with a seven inch when you could get just as much flight time, probably even more with a Flywoo Explorer? Well, it depends. I think this, can carry this longer antenna, which is gonna be better for long range. This is gonna be very efficient as well. You can have a very large battery. It's gonna help manage the weight and have a little bit more authority. If I was going down a mountain where there could be gusts of wind, having the extra power on tap could be the difference between you blowing into the canyon side or just managing through that wind, no problem. The other reason why you're gonna to wanna to go with this is if you're gonna to wanna to carry the best camera possible, GoPro Hero 9 on this sucker, which is the footage you're gonna see at the end. Um, so the Flywheel Explorer is a really nice long range tool, but I wouldn't put anything bigger than maybe a naked camera on here. I don't think anybody's making naked Hero 9s. And to me, that's the best looking footage out there. And this, you go up to a Cinelifter. So this 
does have a place in the hobby. You long range heads, you. I see why you like this. The speed is actually something I didn't expect and I can see how it's addicting because it's speed at a low to mid range throttle. So you are just cruising along at a really nice clip. Very interesting, that fact, guys. Um, the other nice thing is that this is essentially an open source frame. It goes together really nicely. It has a nice dead cat design, so you don't get any of the props in view. Uh, one thing that's a little strange is the camera mount on top here. It feels a little bit precarious if you were to wreck it. Um, but that really allows you to get some special GoPro footage because you essentially have the GoPro right in the prop line. So you can get really nice, low cruising shots that are gonna be cinematic. Uh, I haven't ever flown a quad where the weight of the GoPro just absolutely disappeared as much as this. The analog signal, I just don't like flying analog anymore, guys. It felt like punishment it felt like having to sit at the dinner table and finish your peas before you could have dessert and fly dji again just to get that taste out of your mouth i'm sorry you analog guys i know you love it for long range there's no mistaking that this super powerful race ranger vtx with this antenna will probably get you better range than the dji system i'm fully accepting that fact but if I had my rathers, I'd probably still go with the DJI system. Sorry about that, guys. What do you think? Are you a long range guy? Did I miss something about the long range formula that's so addicting? If I did, leave it in the comments below. Um, this is a really nice and very sturdy frame. I don't think you're gonna be um, breaking this anytime soon. If you were to get a flat tire, you could probably use this as a jack to lift up your car if you lost yours. I mean, this thing is freaking tough. Thanks, guys. Yeah.